Thanks for watching this short video on becoming a facilitator. You're watching this video if you already have the digital badge for universal design and teaching and learning, and you'd now like to add the facilitator badge so that you can facilitate the UDL training for your own colleagues. So in terms of doing the UDL facilitator badge, it's really about working with your colleagues to share your knowledge that you've gained of UDL through the badge and your understanding of UDL. But ultimately, you don't have to be a number one expert in UDL to be a facilitator because the content is already developed, as you know. Your colleagues will do the same online modules as you would have done as a facilitator. And really being a facilitator helps you to build a local UDL community within your own institution, within your own college, within your own school. It's a simple and structured way to spread the UDL message to your colleagues. As you know, the digital badge is free. It's an online course. The majority of it is self-paced. Um, and ultimately what we want to do through also having a facilitator badge is to create a ripple effect. Um, so as many people as possible are doing this UDL training and embedding UDL in their practice. That's really the core of what we're doing. There's obviously national recognition with the UDL badge and with the facilitator badge, as all of this material has been developed through the National Forum's professional development framework. This facilitator badge is a five hour add on to what you've already done, which is the digital badge in UDL. And you can roll out the badge independently once you've completed your facilitator badge, or you can roll it out with us in one of the national rollouts, which happen annually, usually October to December each academic year. So what do you need to do to gain this facilitator badge? Well, you have to watch this short video, um, which you're already doing, which is great. We ask you to explore the facilitator pack as well. Now the facilitator pack has everything in it that um, allows you to be a facilitator. So it's got all of the content, all of the online modules, communications, schedules, everything that you'll need um, to successfully roll out the UDL badge for your own colleagues. And really the, the evidence for the facilitator badge is you creating um, a plan for your own facilitation. So just as the exercise for the UDL badge itself is very practical in that you implement UDL and in the template of the report, you're just telling us about how you implemented UDL. It's similar for the facilitator badge. So we're, if this is a really pra practical exercise where you're planning your facilitation, you're creating a draft schedule, and we're really getting you to think about what the opportunities are and what the challenges are um, for you facilitating UDL training for your own colleagues. So what's inside the facilitators pack? Well, it's there is an instructional manual, which is really important. And you've got online modules as well. So those online modules are given to you in a format that you can upload into your own VLE. Or if you have the facilities or an ed tech who's working with you, maybe you can actually edit those materials. So everything is developed under a Creative Commons license, which means you can adapt it and share it um, with attribution. So there's also materials there to support your peer engagement. So whether you decide to use peer group meetings as we do in the national rollout, or you have a workshop plan, which some people do in the local rollouts. Um, we give you all the materials that you need. If it's peer groups, we give you all of the peer uh, discussion exercises. If it's the workshop, we give you the slides and notes and instructions for that workshop. Um, so as I said, you really do have everything that you need. We give you the activity brief for the redesign and we give you the communication emails and a scheduled producer, which is done through Excel. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to pick up these materials and use them in your own context. It's important to say as well, for those online materials, we also have a Word version, so it's fully accessible for anybody who wants to access the materials that way. And that Word-based version is also very useful for notes for anybody. So the key choice for you as a facilitator really is the mode of delivery. So whether you're online or blended, um, so over 2020 and 2021, obviously we've been online in terms of how we've rolled out the badge and all of the national rollouts have been online um, just for ease of, um, ease of facilitation and ease of access for colleagues all around the country. So nobody was having to kind of travel or move to one particular place to, to access a workshop. So think about how you're going to deliver these sessions. Um, you might deliver your informational webinars throughout if you're doing your local rollout. Um, think about your own technical capacity, who you've got available to you and to, in your team. 
um, what your institution's infrastructure is in terms of what will your colleagues like best? Would they like a face-to-face -face workshop or would they prefer the more self-paced online version? Um, so think about the type of institution you're in. So lots of campuses now are spread out geographically across large areas, in which case the online version may work better for you. The only non-negotiable in terms of facilitation of the UDL badge is those online modules. The online modules are the core of the content, as you know yourself, um, from having done the badge. So they must be rolled out regardless of what context uh, or which facilitation method you're using. So it's important then that you have um, access to a VLE yourself where you can put that material and people can access it, or you can request from the National Forum to get an instance of their Moodle. Personally, when I do a local rollout in UCD, our use, I use our local VLE, um, which is Brightspace, because I think it's nice for people to use a system that they're very familiar with without having to get additional login credentials and things like that. Um, but it's very much your choice in terms of um, what your comfort level is. I will say that uploading the online modules is very, very easy to your VLE. Um, and most institutions have somebody who will assist you with that as well. So the method of engagement then, I've touched on this briefly. So you have to decide in a local rollout whether you're going to have peer groups or you're going to use a workshop method. So for peer groups, it's about having meetings, three or four meetings of a group of three, four or five colleagues, whatever you decide is most appropriate. And those peer groups then support each other throughout the process of the badge. So it helps to deepen that learning. It gives good regular engagement, whether people decide to meet online or if it's local, maybe they can meet face to face. And maybe you can leave that choice up to the groups themselves. So in this mode with the peer groups, the facilitator has to organize and manage the participants into groups. But the groups then undertake the activities themselves. And as I said, in the facilitator pack, we give you those discussion exercises for the peer groups. The groups then give feedback to each other on the redesign activity and they verify badge completion for each other. So that's quite a big piece of work for the peer groups and it means that there's really good engagement and we certainly get excellent feedback when we use peer group um, engagement method. In terms of the workshop then, it's a one-off two or three hour workshop. Um, it's once off rather than the regular engagement, um, which we have with the peer groups who meet um, obviously more than once. The facilitator then organises and facilitates the workshop with activities and notifies the participants of the time. Um, and the facilitator in this instance then takes the responsibility for giving feedback on redesigns and verifying badge completion. So you decide which one is going to be more appropriate for you and your institution and maybe work with colleagues and get some feedback from colleagues as to what they think would be most appropriate. Um, I've done it both ways with peer groups and with a workshop. Um, and really it depends with the, on the group that you're working with, the time available to you as to whether people really want to have that longer engagement, that workshop piece, or that because of people's teaching schedules, maybe it's easier for them to have peer groups because they can arrange those at times that are gonna suit everybody in the group. That can be a challenge with a workshop because attendance at the workshop will be compulsory to complete the badge if they haven't, if you're not doing peer groups you may end up having to run a second workshop. And that's usually what I've done when I use the workshop method is I run at least two workshops, which means people have an additional opportunity to attend a workshop if they aren't able to attend the first one. So if somebody's sick, for instance, and they can't come to one workshop, it's really, in terms of inclusion, better to give them another opportunity to come to a second workshop. So what are the other key facilitator tasks then? Well, obviously you need to fix the course schedule for a local rollout. So um, we give you a recommendation for that across, over, across 10 weeks, um, but you decide on what's appropriate in terms of the timing for your institution. So maybe January is a good time to start, February is a good time to start, September, whatever it might be. Um, so, but you need to fix that course schedule and think about the dates for every single aspect, whether it's a workshop or it's peer groups, and you're going to recommend some dates. Um, you'll need to recruit participants and that's a really key component. So you need to think about who you're going to partner with, how you're going to recruit your participants, how are you going to get the information out there about the badge, how are you going to sell the badge, are you going to have some testimonials maybe from yourself, you've obviously done the badge yourself, um, if you're now doing the facilitator badge as an add-on. So think about um, 
you know, how you're really going to sell this, how you're going to get people to engage. We want people to know that it's a manageable workload. It's about 20, 25 hours across the 10 weeks. So it is manageable and people need to understand, you know, how it works, if it's self-paced self and it can work for them. Um, you'll need to think about the course administration and communication so people will communicate with you quite frequently. And one um, thing to keep in mind with the peer group model is if somebody um, withdraws, will you need to then uh, change groups or merge groups together? Um, and certainly that's something we've come across quite a bit, particularly when we were rolling out the badge during lockdown, for example, and people were under a lot of pressure. Um, so we did have some people who withdrew and ended up doing quite a bit of um, changes to groups, which is why we've now taken a decision to do larger groups for the next national rollout. And finally, you'll do badge issuing. So once people have submitted their redesign to you it's been, and it's been verified either with their peer groups or you've verified it and given some feedback, then you need to issue the badges through the Open Badge Factory. So you can get login details for the Open Badge Factory from Colin Lowry in the National Forum. And he'll be able to provide that for you and uh, then you can issue the badges. It's a very, very simple process. Once you log in, you'll click issue badge, you'll choose the badge and you'll go through. You'll need to have your list of participants, um, name and email address or even just email address. And uh, you can upload that. You can use a template email and you'll be able to see the emails that we've used previously actually to issue the badge in that system as well. So that's it for our video, a very short video on the facilitator badge. So I will be in touch with you directly with some additional materials. So that will include a link to the facilitators pack, as well as the template for your facilitator activity. Um, if you have any questions at all, as always, you can email me lisa.padden at ucd.ie. I wish you luck with gaining your facilitator badge. We're always delighted when people want to complete the facilitator badge and spread the UDL message across their institutions. Thanks very much.